So, uh, so basically, uh, we start with discuss, discussing about what is a transducer. Uh, it basically converts some kind of energy, okay, of incoming kind of energy into electrical signal. Okay, the the input or the coming energy, it can be uh, movement, light, sound, pressure, heat, okay. Uh, and then it converts uh, that energy into uh, some kind of uh, other energy. So there, so there, there are two general type of uh, transducer. Uh, there are electrical and also uh, transducer and also mechanical. Okay. So basically, uh, electrical uh, transducer okay, uh, that converts parameter energy, energy in, uh, physical energy into electrical. Okay, whereas actuator okay, converts electrical signal into mechanical. Okay, into mechanical. So actuator, okay, like uh, we discussed in the just yes, uh, in the lesson two, uh, solenoid for instance, okay, it converts uh, electrical signal or, or current create the magnetism uh, and then convert it into uh, force okay uh, uh, energy in the form of force okay and I create basically displacement uh, okay so that's our actuator so that is basically linear displacement uh, okay uh, and there are other common mechanical actuator like uh, motor Okay, motor is uh, around us like our ceiling fan, table fan. Uh, are also the actuator. So like I said, uh, actuator uh, converts electrical signal to physical output. Okay. Now uh, others... Uh, like, like uh, solenoid, uh, I have explained about solenoid valve. Okay, pump, pump basically uh, motor which uh, turn the impeller. Okay, and, and then water will move okay, from one or transfer from one location to one location. Okay, so the basic component of a pump is none other than a motor okay now also uh, actuator like flow transducer okay and also turbine flow convert current to force okay so this is inside uh, the pipeline and okay? that uh, motion replacing the flow rate uh. Okay, so so we just look into the definition of transducer. Um, uh, so transducer basically convert one form of energy to another form of energy. Uh, so, so sensor is basically a subset of transducer. Um, so a sensor basically convert physical parameter into direct or direct electrical output. Okay. Uh, so direct, uh, like for example, electrical maker sensor uh, convert chemical reaction on the electro surface to electrical signals to set of uh, electrode put into chemical. Uh, liquid so the the reaction will uh, and then we close the circuit of the chemical the the electrode uh, then when when the electrode 
into the liquid we will create, we'll, uh, create a chemical reaction and then electron will transfer and then we see the current flow uh, indirect is like uh, just before we explain uh, discuss about <coughs> potentiometer okay, whereas uh, displacement change the total resistance of the potentiometer and then the resistance is uh, can be directly or indirect uh, directly change into current but in general it is indirect where because it needs a there's a, a, a extra step before the conversion okay so it the like potentiometer basically the change of resistance but before we can uh, use the information into our neck neck uh, as output okay uh, we need to bias okay the 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 sensor uh, before we get the uh, output voltage so the sensor classification can be self generating or, or we we call it as the self generating uh, sensor or active sensor whereas uh, the self generating sensor do not require uh power supply okay so instead it is um, uh, producing or, or generating uh, output signal or output voltage or output current by itself so it's self-generating uh, example are thermocouples okay we will look into uh, that thermocouple in more details so how uh, we use thermocouple to measure heat okay and how what the, the construction and like we have uh, pv cell okay, pv cell is basically uh, the suck, uh, uh, structure or component of a solar panel solar panel is basically combination of uh, PV uh, photovoltaic cells okay so, uh, and then we also we have piezoelectric material which convert vibration or sound into electric uh, signal okay like our microphone so basically it generate electric signal based on the acoustic okay acoustic uh, vibration yeah but uh, one of the uh, characteristics of the self generating sensor they produce very small signals okay, so we need uh, additional signal conditioning okay uh, basically to enhance okay or to amplify the output okay the output uh, and then there is another uh, terms in sensor classification or modifier so basically a modifier uh, it 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 is it is does does not change the or convert the energy uh is is basically uh reduce okay or, or, or the output is basically the fraction okay of of the input okay so it means that input and the output uh, will be in the uh, the same energy form okay so it will just modify okay uh uh, so the like for example we, we see in the bank bell crank uh, relay so it convert the uh, linear displacement into uh, rotational displacement okay so same of energy but change uh, uh, or, or, or uh, only a part of the energy okay or, or perhaps it can amplify the energy okay so it is it's called as a modifier so coming back to uh, <coughs> transducer 
because, because sensor is a, a, a subset of transducer. Okay, uh, tra transducer is much, uh, uh, it's basically a big, uh, much bigger picture. So inside the transducer, there are sensor and actuator. Okay. So transducer, uh, okay, uh, they are active transducer and also passive transducer. Okay. Uh, basically, active transducer generate an electrical signal directly in uh, response to the physical parameter. And then it, it, it does not uh, require an external power source okay, in order to operate. Okay. So this uh, independent uh, self-generating. As well as uh, as for the passive transducer, so it needs uh, uh, energy control. It is basically an operate under energy controlling principle, and then it require external uh, electric source to operate, and then it, it depend on the change of a uh, uh, change in the particular parameter like the resistance, inductance, or uh, capacitance. <laughs> now we come to the uh, criteria okay, in uh, selecting a uh, transducer. Okay, so this is the common common criteria. Uh, so we try to okay discuss a bit okay today. Uh, so there are by many criteria in choosing uh, sensor. Okay, and I believe. Uh, you as a, a practitioner know the the criterion or the things that they have been, been choose to uh, put uh, to uh, select uh, transducer okay and all of having said all that the criteria like range uh, precision accuracy I think one of the last thing they have to consider is the cost. Okay, the cost. I mean, the budget. Okay. So, if we have chosen all the range, the precision, accuracy, uh, the possibility, repeatability, sensitivity, the response of the system, but at last, okay, we will depend on the budget. Okay, the total budget that is required. Okay, if uh, in in instrumentation, okay, the total cost uh, in in any system, okay, the total cost of the production, okay, uh, if you consider the total uh, the the sub cost for instrumentation, okay, a good system must have a, a good budget for instrumentation and measurement, right? So it will determine the. Uh, the accuracy will determine the effectiveness uh, of the system. Okay, let's try to look into okay, to the range. Okay, so basically range okay, in uh, we we had seen uh, some application uh, example of the capacitive sensor, the minimum and maximum okay, range. So minimum and maximum range value of a quantity that instrument is designed okay, to measure the range of the sensor is the maximum and minimum okay, of a parameter, parameter that can be measured. So any device, okay, it must come with a specification, must come with a uh, description. Okay, uh, There is no absolute... Uh, sensor or transistor that can be used at, at, at any level uh, even for temperature sensor uh, we have many specific specification or range okay uh, okay so for example or temperature sensor that there's some such temperature sensor can be measured uh, at the range of uh, minus 50 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius, okay. And on top of that, on the range or span, uh, we need 
uh, we need to know the dead band. Dead band is basically when we we give a input. Okay, there is no uh, response or output. Okay, so so on that range is called as a dead band. Okay, example of a dead band it can be on a motor or motor system. Okay, uh, when we give an input, okay, the motor will not. Uh, immediately uh, rotate or turn. That is because the power that supply to the motor is not uh, big enough to overcome the inertia, uh, the inertia of the load. Okay, even the inertia of the shaft. Okay, so the so we need to give more power. Okay, until the motor. Uh, start to turn. So at the moment when we give a power until the motor start that is called as a dead band. Okay, dead band. So uh, device also uh, behave the same uh, manner. Okay, devices. Uh, there is a point where we give an input okay, to the device but there is no uh, okay, direct output to the device. So that that is called as a dead band, okay. And of course, and also like sometimes it has a limit of detection or LOD. You know, so this is uh, usually uh, come together with chemical sensors. So for Measurement system, okay, measurement system, uh, part of the specific specification is the range of variable involved, okay. So, so like I said, uh, if uh, our system is to measure temperature, so there will be a range of temperatures uh, specified. For example, okay, a system, okay, we specify it can measure uh, 20 degree Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. Okay. Uh, so in uh, measurement system, uh, two analog standards uh, are in common use as a mean to represent the range of variable in in the system. Okay. For for electrical system, we use a range of electric current carries in the wire. Okay, I think uh, most of you who are a practitioner engineer know about this. Okay, and well, okay, in, uh, no. Okay, but basically uh, in, okay, in, 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 in measurement system, when we send a sensor, okay, send a signal, okay, to another system, okay, to the controller, okay, we convert that signal, okay, okay into current signal, Okay, current signal. Uh, and for pneumatic, okay, for pneumatic system, we use a range of gas pressure that carries in the pipe. Okay, some 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 other, we use a uh, uh, gas pressure. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, current signal is the most uh, current transmission signal that the most common current transmission signal is 4 to 20 milliampere that's the standard okay okay uh, so for example if we have a system okay sensor that measure between 20 to 120 degrees celsius Okay, so we're basically we, uh, so we make that the twenty degrees Celsius to represent four milliamp, and the one hundred twenty mil degrees Celsius to represent uh, twenty milliamp. Okay, is that that's uh, 
uh, example okay uh, standard that we use okay so we make it proportional so we make the okay the span okay of the sensor output to be proportional to the uh, analog signal okay with your analog current signal okay uh, because this standard okay can be used okay for long distance connection a wired long distance wired connection okay uh, rather than use uh, voltage okay so that's the uh, range of the sensor that we convert into analog signal okay so far is there any uh, discussion or question uh i so i think if there is no question i think we stop here okay uh and we will continue uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m okay so with that i say uh, thank you for everyone to for okay thank you professor uh just one thing i joined the class late uh this morning so i need to uh is there a recording have, uh this this morning have you have you have you attend at give the attendance this morning uh no i have joined around like 10:45 something oh 10:45 i think okay it's, it's fine it's fine for i think tomorrow uh, i will mm. open another attendance okay, okay? All right. Take so note. for okay, today's okay. attendance, uh, what should I do? Pardon? For today's attendance, what should I do? Ah, uh, it's okay. It's today, today, uh, I will not count lah. So just want to see everyone. Tomorrow okay. will. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Rata. Salam. Thank you, Rata. Okay. Right. Thank you, Dr. Okay, we proceed and continue with our topic. Okay, yesterday, we have uh, reached to this uh, uh, discussion where I showed that there are two analog standard that are commonly used as a means of presenting the range of variable in, in, in measurement system. So, basically, there are two. First is for electrical system. Okay, we use a range of electric current that carry in the in wires. And for pneumatic system, we use a range of gas pressure carries in pipes. So, uh, so these, these signals are used uh, mainly to transmit variable information over uh, some uh, long distance, okay, such as from the uh, control room uh, to the plant okay and uh, the for for electric the most common uh, transmission signal is 4 to 20 milliampere so dc current okay and we are mainly going to focus on uh the signal transmission signal uh, of 4 to 20 milliampere so let's look at this example so suppose uh, the temperature range Twenty to one hundred twenty degrees Celsius to one hundred 
degree Celsius is linearly converted to the standard current range of 4 to 20 milliamp. Okay. So what current will result from 66 degrees Celsius? And what temperature does 6.5 milliamp peer represent? Okay. So to, I think this is just uh, to, uh, to solve this problem, we can develop a lead, uh, linear equation between temperature and current. So we can write I M, here we see the slope, the I current equivalent to the slope T plus I dot, I dot is the uh, value, and basically when the temperature supposed to be zero degrees Celsius, but that, that is just a, a reference, okay. but we are not, okay, using or operating our system below than 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if we draw that, I T And the slope is from the current difference divided to the temperature difference of the uh, linear response. So the basically, and from the from the data, given the information. When I is four milliamp, so basically T is twenty degrees Celsius. Uh, so maybe perhaps. And when I equals to twenty milliamp, the temperature is one hundred twenty degrees Celsius. Okay. So we can write the equation or
Yes, the first equation. Yes, second equation. So we can find M by subset subtracting one equation one subtract equation two. So we get sixteen million equivalent to hundred degrees Celsius slope so that the slope value is zero point one six milli per degree Celsius. So that's the slope. Okay. Then we find uh, the value of current I dot when the temperature is supposed to be zero. Uh, so you can use uh, equation one or equation two. Okay, can we can use equation two? And we get the current when the temperature is at uh, supposed to be zero degrees Celsius to be zero point eight milliamp. Okay, so the equation. Relating to current and temperature, okay. We uh, insert into one or two, we get the uh, actual linear response equation to be Okay, so that's the final equation. Uh, sorry, no, that's the, not the final equation. Oh, oh no. Do I do that? I have to rewrite it again. Let me give me some time.
Okay, so that's the uh, final equation or the the actual linear equation for the response. Okay, so for 66 degrees Celsius. So we have uh, equal to eleven point three six million. Okay. So for 6.5 milliampere. So, what's the temperature? So T temperature at uh, when the current is six point five milli ampere is thirty five point six degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's uh, discussion about range. Okay, so that's pretty much what I, I have covered about range. Now we look into precision. So basically, precision is a concept. Uh, if based of Doctor? Yes. Uh, so can you go to the example slide? I want to see the final answer. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, doctor. Uh, sorry, sorry. Oh. Okay. You got, you got it? I got it, got it. All right. Okay, so the pretty much uh, uh, about range. Now we go to uh, discuss about precision. Precision is... Uh, more likely related to uh, to the the to the degree of reproducibility of a measurement. We will discuss discuss uh, in, in more detail about uh, reproducibility. Okay. So in general, the precision is. Where you have a let's say in, in this picture, okay, you have a set of uh, outcome, okay, from your measurement, okay, represented by a uh, uh, black dots, okay, black dots. So that is your outcome. But the actual or true uh, value. Of the outcome is represented by the uh, bullseye or the dot, the center of the target. So that's the uh, actual, is that actual uh, or so the, the true value. I mean, the, the what is supposed to be the the value. But what what you are getting is an outcome, several uh, outcome from your measurement which have been carried out several times okay uh one bad characteristic about the outcome is you have a cost uh, consistent 
value, consistent value in between the result. Okay. But that does not necessarily uh, explain the accuracy. But in this case, you know that your 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 measurement okay or your device well, can produce and uh, 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 same result every, uh, for let's say you run it four times okay but okay in, in this case okay your your device has a precise output okay high precise but low accuracy so in this case okay uh, you uh, can decide that your okay, measurement did some calibration okay uh, uh, and at the, and at this, at this point, some calibration should uh, rectify okay, the issue. Uh, that is one side of the measurement uh, quality. Or now we look in, into accuracy. So basically, accuracy is how close an instrument measure the true or actual value of the process. So, so in this case, where the outcome, okay, uh, the outcome of the measurement, uh, so it's overlap with the true uh, value. Okay, so if you calculate the average of the outcome, okay, the average, even the average is within the range okay, of the uh, true value. So in this case, then you can say that your, your result is having high accuracy. Uh, so it's, accuracy is very important, okay? Uh, like, like today, okay, we have, okay, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, still ongoing pandemic. Uh, so our device oh, must have a great accuracy. Although, okay, at more screening, Okay, we, maybe we can compromise, but for actual, uh, for having a, okay, guarantee result, we have, must have a very accurate, okay, equipment. But uh, for developed country like Malaysia, uh, we can't afford to have, a, uh, in some cases, uh, we can't afford to have a, in some situation, we cannot afford to have the accurate result, uh, accurate equipment all the time. For example, uh, for COVID nineteen test, okay, uh, to if you want to go straight screening, okay, to get that ninety nine percent of confidence, we need to go for PCR uh, uh, test. Okay, 99%. Okay, but we also have a RTK, a saliva test. That's only uh, confidence level about 95%. Okay, but if you have a symptom, you can use the RTK. But in some cases, uh, you have to go for PCR. Like for example, going to the airport. Okay. But in developed country, okay, like Korea, they have the capability, okay, to, okay, at one point, they have the capability to ask all the citizens to do or to perform the PCR test. That's one point, okay. But I think 
uh, if every wire was tested, uh, okay. Uh, if they let the airport border open, so that's that going to be effective, lah. Okay. So like uh, other equipment instrument or instrument that is used to screen, it's like the uh, body uh, heat sc uh, temperature scanner. Okay. Like uh, our the temperature uh, that is used the infrared thermometer. Okay, the accuracy. Uh, state uh, it it must stated the accuracy lah. Okay, for example, the accuracy is plus minus zero point two degrees Celsius. Okay, so if the the accuracy stated like that, that means uh that is the accuracy of the measurement so we will look into uh, okay so the accuracy okay uh basically uh, specify the maximum overall error to be expected from a device okay uh okay that represent the, the measure that measurement or variable and accuracy uh, is usually expressed as the inaccuracy. Okay. Uh, means that the rate given on the equipment. Okay, so that ex actually express the inaccuracy. For example, uh, the accuracy, okay, uh, represent uh, to. Uh, uh, represent the uh, uh, the variable the measured variable so the accuracy for the measured variable okay the accuracy is plus minus in some uh, temperature measurement therefore there will be some uncertainty of plus minus two degrees Celsius in any value of the measured uh, uh, of of temp temperature measure measured but plus minus two degrees Celsius, okay, for very high temperature measurement, that is acceptable lah to or tolerable. But for like screening the body human body temperature or for clinical study usually the accuracy must be uh, at the range of 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 degrees Celsius okay so if the, if the stated plus minus let's say 0 0.2 degrees Celsius so that is the uh, inaccuracy of the measurement for the measured variable okay Sometimes, and then the second case, percentage of the instrument full scale reading, okay. Uh, so the accuracy of, let's say, plus minus 0 0.5 full scale in a 5 volt full scale range would be the accuracy of uncertainty in any measurement is plus minus 0 0.025 volt. Okay, is that on the uh, current measured variable is on the full scale. So if you do for if the stated inaccuracy is plus minus for full scale, okay, in the five volt so full scale. So let's say you use the full scale to measure, and then you get let's say one volt. So the any measurement must uh, plus minus zero point to five okay. and then uh, the third is a percentage of uh, instrument span uh, or range that is uh, the percentage of the instrument measurement capability okay so let's say the device measuring plus minus three percent of span for 20 to 50 uh, psi range of pressure the accuracy will be okay uh, zero plus minus zero point zero three 
multiply with 50 by this 20. So you see here, given the value is in percentage. Okay. So in percentage. Okay. So therefore, to find the accuracy, so we have to uh, convert into the absolute or uh, uh, value. Uh, sorry, uh, we have to find the uh, uh, absolute value. Okay, the form of the PSI. So, 3% 3 over 100. Okay. And then the percentage of the actual reading. Okay. So, for like, for example, uh, plus by the 2% of reading voltage. Okay, 2%. So, that is in percentage. Okay. So, to find... Uh, Okay, so what is the inaccuracy of 2 volt? So that would be, okay, 2 over 100 times 2 volt. So you get plus minus 0 0.04. So in this case, is absolute value. Okay. Uh, absolute value. Okay, let's look at this uh, example. So a temperature sensor has a span of 20 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. A measurement result in the value of 55 degrees Celsius for, for the temperature. So we need to what specify the error if the accuracy is first 0 0.5 uh, in the first case uh, plus by the 0 0.5 degree of the full scale okay the b if uh, the Error is 0 0.75 percent of spend at C plus minus 0 0.8 percent of reading. So, what is the possible temperature in each case? So for, for the first case, uh, we have to know what is the full scale reading. Okay. So the full scale reading is, so, so this is the full scale reading, 250 degrees Celsius. So, okay. Therefore, uh, 0.5 percent of the full scale plus minus 0 0.5 over 100 okay multiply with 250 degrees Celsius so we get plus minus 1.25 degrees Celsius so uh, the actual temperature is in the range
So, okay, so the, the result is 53%. So the, the range, okay, low. Fifty five minus one point two five, a high fifty five plus one point two five. This is fifty three point seven five degrees Celsius and fifty six point. Two five degrees Celsius. Okay. So this is the actual output. Okay. And case B, the error, the error is given at the zero point seven five uh, percent of span. Therefore, uh, so we need to find the the value of the spend. Okay, 250 degree, 250 degree Celsius minus 20 degree Celsius. Okay, so we get the error from the spread plus minus 1.75. Five degrees Celsius. So the range of error, okay, the range, the range of uh, the range of the the ratio, the ratio that we expect due to the error. Okay, low. Fifty-five minus one point seven two Uh, then the high is fifty six point seven two five. Okay. And but if the error is zero point eight percent of reading okay so the error uh, 0 0.0 0 0.8 divide by percent okay plus by this multiply with the actual reading 55 and uh, the error in this third uh, or C is plus minus zero point four four degrees Celsius. So the range hello.
Hi. Fifty five plus zero point four four. That will be point four four degrees Celsius. Okay. Right. So keep. I give you that's at a, uh, a problem. Okay, they try to solve it in okay, ten minutes. Okay, so I give you ten minutes. Try to solve, and then we'll, uh, I will show you the uh, answer. Uh, sorry, doctor. That was uh, three nine seven ohm, right? Oh, sorry, I, I got yeah three nine seven. Correct. Yeah, th three nine seven. I give you ten minutes to try to solve this.
Okay, let's look at the answer.
Here they, they are sir. We uh, circulate the area with full scale. So 0.5% multiply with the full scale value. Okay, full scale value uh, is 1.5k or 1,500 ohm. Okay, so 0.5%, uh, 0.5 over 100, uh, multiply 1,500, you get plus minus 7.5 ohm. So that's the error, or sometimes it's called as the absolute error. So the measured resistance, uh, the low uh, will be 389.5 ohm, and then the high range will be 404.5 ohm, whereas the accuracy is represented in percent. We we'll find the error in uh, uh, so the equation to find the accuracy is error in absolute. Okay, yeah, which is this, this is the error uh, in absolute divided by the measured value. The measured value is 397.0 oh, multiplied with 100. So the accuracy is uh, 90%. Okay, so the basically that's the accuracy basically representing the inaccuracy lah. Okay, uh, inaccuracy. So as the lower lo, the lower the the value, the better the result. So we have looked at to the accuracy, uh, range, position, and accuracy. Now uh, we look into the reproducibility. Okay, basically, reproducibility is the closeness of output reading where the same input is applied repetitively over a short period of time. Okay, with change of measurement condition, change of instrument and observer, change location and change condition of use maintained through or the variation arising using the same measurement process among different instrument and operator over a long period of time. So reproducibility is basically okay you okay uh, repeat. A set of measurement, okay, somewhere else. Okay, or you, like for example, you establish a measurement method or measurement set of measurement. Uh, you then we want to know, okay, whether, okay, the measurement method is reproducible. Okay, it can be okay. You have an equipment. And then you want to check whether the measurement is reproducible somewhere else outside your uh, facility, for example. Okay, so you can import, you, you can export your instrument okay, to somewhere else or say outside, outside uh, your facility. Uh, and then, okay, you re of course you rec you you okay instruct okay uh, the counterpart in the other place okay, to perform set the same set of measurement uh, basically okay okay uh, but different uh, condition in terms of like for example the temperature okay, the humidity okay elevation. Okay, elevation of the place. Okay, and then uh, the 
the the test is run by someone else okay so it could be all those uh what it what, what is uh, stated in the in in the uh, point stated in the okay uh, about the preliminary policy can be everything you change all the measurement condition or instrument okay the operator the location okay Okay, uh, uh, it could be one, a part of the uh, things that you change, okay, meaning that you brought, you export the instrument to somewhere else because you want to test the instrument, okay, uh, or you establish a set of measurement and then ask them whether uh, the measurement method can be verified. Okay. So if the measurement, okay, come out with the same result, okay, uh, level, let's say it's level of accuracy, uh, level of uncertainty, which you have done here or in your facility, so you can say that your measurement or your equipment uh, has high reproducibility. So this is important, okay, uh, because you want to make sure that your uh, instrument or your, your equipment or your measurement can be applied in uh, or can be accepted uh, elsewhere, okay. Uh, so, uh, so equipment, the same thing like the equipment that we want Okay, to have it must have high reproducibility. Okay, uh, so to avoid that, uh, that sometimes, so, uh, let's say, car, some kind car, correct, uh, was manufactured okay, in outside. Okay, it may have some problem. Okay, uh, when we use it in our country, for example, so there's an issue of incompatible. Okay, incompatibility. So that's why when we okay choose equipment or or we make a measurement, the reproducibility is very critical. Okay, so okay, uh, can we have a break? Five minutes. Okay. Okay, so that's reproducibility. Then we have repeatability. Repeatability is basically uh, the other side of the coin of, okay, and so we, we have discussed about reproducibility and we have repeatability. Uh, basically, repeatability is the closeness of output reading when the same input is applied repeatedly over a short period of time. The same measurement, same instrument and observer, same location, same condition and use maintained uh, throughout. 
So this basically repeatability is done before reproducibility is supposed to. Okay, that meaning uh, we use okay consistently okay uh, an operator or a tester okay to uh, make a measurement okay or do a test okay repeat the test uh, but maintain the same measurement condition okay in the facility okay and use the same equipment see whether uh, we can get the same output okay so if our uh, measurement uh, have the same output and consistently okay uh, after we okay make sure all the Okay, parameters in the uh, stated here like the condition and then the location okay so if we will get the same measurement so uh, we can sure that the repeat repeatability of our measurement is high okay next uh is sensitivity uh, i think Yesterday, uh, we have discussed uh, about sensitivity, uh, but I have uh, explained a bit and, uh, about sensitivity. Okay, so basically, sensitivity is a change in measurement output, which occur when the quantity being measured by a given out bound. So basically, sensitivity is the change of output for a given input. Uh, for a given change of input, okay, we have a uh, uh, equipment, okay, like a transducer. Okay, we give change of input and then we observe the change of output okay in this case for example uh, we have a transducer a and b okay so how do we identify or uh, compare the sensitivity between A and B. Okay, we basically measure okay, the slope or estimate the slope uh, for each transducer. Okay. So if we, so we can get slope A and slope B. then we make comparison so basically uh, the transducer with the higher sensitivity have higher uh, sensitivity meaning that it the instrument with higher sensitivity can uh, produce much higher output uh, with the uh, given input, okay. We will look into an uh, example. Okay. So from fig in this figure, we have two uh, set of response. Okay. The first one, okay, the response. Uh, from type E thermocouple, okay. This is the response for type E thermocouple. Uh, second one is the response for type K thermocouple. Okay. So at uh, looking quickly. 
from uh, the response, okay, we can say that type E, it has a higher sensitivity. Okay, looking at the uh, slope. Okay, type E have higher slope, but we need to calculate okay, which one has the higher uh, sensitivity. So for type E, okay, we, we can calculate We can choose two points, uh, say point one and point two. Okay. Or oh, it's just it's not given there. Okay, we choose this point one and point two. Sorry. For type E, uh, voltage output temperature. So at point one, so the value is six point eight. Deliver the temperature is supposed to be 100 degrees Celsius. Point two, so what six four point two. Really vote and then the temperature is about 60 degree okay. so sensitivity <clears throat> so basically we measure the change of uh, output divided by the change of input. Okay. So sensitivity is six point eight. Minus four point two divide by one hundred to this sixty. So my calculation is correct. How much? So, 
I'm getting 65 microvolt per degree Celsius. So that's for type E. For type A, we choose void. It's point three and it's a bit tricky. Eh? Uh, that's funny. Let's see, assume okay, at this point is four. Because we need two points at least to calculate the sensitivity. <coughs> we missing one to another point. So let's say, okay. Oh, kalau kita guna zero tak boleh? Kita start daripada zero? Uh, boleh juga. Because, ya, dia intercept at zero eh. But it's okay lah. We can use zero lah. Okay. Okay, so we use the the, the, the point is zero. Okay. It's because stated here. Tak apalah. More or less. Okay, point. Three point three four point two and then hundred point zero zero zero. So this is sensitivity. Four point two divided by the zero hundred zero, so you get four point two micro volt per degree Celsius. Okay, so the slope or the gradient for type E okay, basically represent uh, for every. Type of the gradient to represent the sensitivity. I think this is that point four point two four point forty two. Sorry. So we can say for the sensitivity, okay, for type E, is much greater than the sensitivity than type K. So, uh, type E has a better sensitivity. So, the output at each temperature, okay, basically measured is higher for type E. For example, okay, at 100 degrees Celsius, okay, same temperature or one temperature, 100 degrees Celsius, the type K output E, uh, is 4.2 millivolt but type E output is 6.8 millivolt so so basically the sensitivity re reflect okay, which type of, uh, equipment have higher output at a uh, uh, certain uh, point of input okay that's the basically sensitivity. And then the uh, time response. Okay, basically, uh, one of the important character, character, character uh, criteria for 
uh, a, a system okay so you have to observe the uh, response time okay basically uh, <coughs> uh, what you see here uh, or this example is a correct uh, first order uh, output of uh, a, a sensor or a transducer a first res uh, first order response so that is a typical first order response okay uh, sub I, I just choose uh, first order response okay uh, to represent okay, the basically response of a, a, sen a sensor they could uh, other higher order response for uh, a sensor. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, okay, under ideal condition, uh, so if you have a sensor, ideally, if you have a sensor or transducer, When we okay give us input, okay we expect okay the ideally we expect if we give an input, there will be an instant response. Okay, and let's say we expect that if we get an input. Okay, say, say it. Okay. So let's say A, we give like A, then we expect the output. It okay. have the same or, or quickly respond to the input. Okay. Ideally, okay. that's what we expect lah, okay, from uh, a, a sensor, okay. But uh, in, in reality, okay, the, the, any sensor or transducer will have a response time. So it will take uh, the sub time for the sensor to reach its final value okay so that's uh, the nature or the practical output uh, of a sensor and uh, this is given by uh, this this is uh, represented by uh, first order okay response okay first order response uh, there are several uh, important parameters uh, in the uh, first order response. For example, here, this is uh, the tau. So, tau is basically a time constant. Okay, it's basically the time for the time for the response uh, to reach. Uh, around 70% of it uh, from the final value so that is called as the time constant okay so uh, there nothing much we can for our response <coughs> uh, to improve the response time is the, basically we have go have to go down to the uh, construction of or, or the material bit okay uh, uh, bed of uh, what was the sensor uh, bed of so the material of the sensor or the construction will determine the uh, actual response time so we if you want to rest to improve the, the response time uh, so, so we need to improve the 
basic design basically <coughs> Uh, so the, just want to okay uh, highlight that uh, any transducer or, or sensor uh, doesn't uh, inherit the ideal uh, characteristic. Uh, the so the their response. Uh, must be represented by uh, the simplest form is the first order system and then uh, it can be more complex okay depending on the design it can be second order so if a so-called second order uh, you see uh, the oscillation of the response some oscillation uh, before the final value we are not going to go through that concept very in detail. Yeah, okay. Next, uh, we go to the other uh, criteria. Okay, the other criteria that involve uh, in the sensor okay, rate, uh, characteristic of important characteristic and then uh, here is what is called as hysteresis uh, hysteresis is uh, another important uh, uh, character that we have to consider or we have to look into especially in the case when we operate our sensor or transducer uh, in, in a very uh, in, in, in cycles uh, so means that uh, frequent this uh, cycle we uh, use our equipment uh, uh, many times uh, giving uh, uh, different uh, cycle of input high and low or so we need to check whether the system uh, inherit for having the uh, hysteresis problem so basically a transducer okay, should capable of following the change of input okay, regardless with direction of the change is made. If the equipment cannot follow okay, the change of input, that means it has some hysteresis okay, okay, in, in its property. Okay. So, for example, in the case of like magnetism, okay, magnetism uh, where current versus the magnetic field okay uh, so, so in general when the current okay in this example current in the graph will we give us a uh, current ideally the magnetic flux should increase linearly okay but when the current is released or reduced so it's supposed to follow the same uh, response or line uh, but in magnetic, magnetic uh, circuit so the it, the it observe that the magnetism may follow a different path okay when it is unload or the current is reduced or a change in a different direction. Okay. For magnetism, okay, it is due okay, to the uh, effect of any current. Okay, so, so whenever the current okay, is changing direction, it does not follow okay, uh, the response that is supposed to be crossed at the center, but it, it creates an area okay, uh, 
lash area so uh, in the large difference between the actual response is called hysteresis. The larger the hysteresis, the larger the uh, indefficiency. So hysteresis has a relationship with uh, losses. So it breaks the disease up. Uh, large hysteresis will induce much a larger eddy current and eddy current will lead to uh, heat heat uh, larger heat uh, 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 generation in in the device okay but uh, that we are talking about in the instrument the instrument uh, they are they, they are uh, cases or condition when hysteresis also can happen like for example we have this uh, example, uh, uh, burden tube. Burden tube is a common device that is used to measure, uh, to indicate pressure in, in a pipeline, for example, or in a, a vessel, in a tank. So, uh, what, what is the construction of a burden tube? So basically, burden tube is made of a uh, tube, uh, made of metal alloy material. It's basically flexible, so made into a C shape. Okay, uh, and then the other end of the tube is uh, basically sealed or closed. Okay. So uh, the other end of the tube is attached or inserted into the vessel or uh, condition or, or environment that we want to measure the, the, the pressure. So when pressure increase, what, what happened? Uh, the end of the tube of the will uh, expand, okay, expand and it will bend uh, to this direction and at the end of the tube is basically uh, attached to a link to a gear and on the gear there's a pointer okay so when the pressure increase okay it will uh, bend uh, the burden tube and also will deflect the pointer so that that process is basically uh, will show you okay, the uh, pressure it's supposed to be uh, proportional lah. okay but uh, if we if this burden tube is used many time okay uh, on uh, in in the cyclic measure uh, a cyclic output of pressure that vary over the time so the the, the indicator may not be uh, uh, I mean the currency may be reduced due to hysteresis where the expansion and compression a rate will not may not be the same okay so it may expand uh, faster uh, as compared to compression or, or vice versa okay and also okay hysteresis in uh, okay other than that uh, a part of uh, in this room a part of the let's say the burden burden tube case is uh, the tube also due to loose leakage okay okay so you see in modern tube there are link or gear okay so in mechanical uh, system okay the hysteresis okay where the output okay is have giving a different reading when we change 
the input direction okay so when we increase okay so it follow a different path and then when we decrease it give a different path okay so there's a big hysteresis issue lah. okay there's a big there's a hysteresis issue so what we have to do is to uh, change the instrument or, or repair so, uh, but in, in the case of burden tube it's most likely hard to replace the tube okay or the small component okay, rather than doing that we just okay, replace uh, the whole uh, equipment okay or the whole uh, instrument that is much faster lah. Uh, because it will not be practical okay to change one of of the part okay uh, better to have a whole new equipment okay so we have to be very careful in some system that require very accurate reading okay, you have to observe the hysteresis problem Uh, other than hysteresis, I think what uh, other than that, like uh, uh, lifetime and then uh, cost, I think that, that factor we'll discuss in more detail uh, in, in the next chapter. Okay, we will look into the, the next chapter, we'll discuss about that. Uh, so we'll uh, elaborate lah uh, uh, the other factors that there is uh, required for the selection of uh, equip, uh, equipment okay the criteria for to select uh, the equipment okay uh, which uh, then yeah the cost is the uh, one of the final thing lah. okay then uh, also you need to check the availability of the transducer okay or the equipment uh, it is very critical lah to to know or to check because it will determine uh, the time taken to uh, deliver a project like I do also do research okay, some uh, component that is uh, I want to order may take uh, weeks okay especially during this time so what you have to do you have to find alternative okay you cannot rely okay, on the specific just one specific equipment unless it is very rare what you have to do is to find an alternative check for the same uh, specification okay and then invasive or not invasive okay this is very important invasive or this 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 is important Term about invasive. Uh, let me. What's uh, what is uh, basically invasive? So it we, we need to know what what is invasive. Basically, yeah, it says uh, involving the in production 
of its robot or other object in into the process okay let's say into the pipeline let's say your pipeline is is a process so should it be invasive well what is intrusive is basically uh, causing disruption or intrusion uh, so that is invasive so maybe Maybe we can look into some example of okay installing okay sensor on 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 the pipeline uh, so okay let's try to to invasive And invasive intrusive and intrusive okay Okay, so invasive involving the introduction of instrument or other object into the process and intrusive causing disruption. So let's say we have a pipeline. Okay. Then uh, this pipeline is used to transfer material lah, okay uh, like liquid flow or gas flow okay so let's say we want to install uh, an instrument okay instrument into into or around the pipeline to measure uh, for example okay, the best flow rate okay we want to know what's the best flow rate or oh, okay, of course we start with the uh, measuring the flow okay, but so the term if equipment is invasive and intrusive okay first the equipment will be inside okay or or touching the uh, inside of the system right? inside of the system and also if it is intrusive means that it is causing disruption of the flow so somehow it impedes so it create uh, a blocking uh, not totally but uh, some of it okay partially probably so if it is both invasive and intrusive means that we have to get back uh, and like an incision okay, open the part okay. okay then let's see this our okay. so it means that let's say we make a, a hole Okay, and then we insert okay, our equipment so this basically will create ok 
okay, disruption on the flow. Okay, and also it is in, okay, invas invasive, means that it is introduced inside. Okay. 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 So, how about invasive but not intrusive? Means that it does not impede. Okay. So, in this second case, can think of like the same our pipeline. Uh, still, it main invasive. We make okay, a sub uh, hole hole, but our could still have to make hole because probably uh, uh, the, the principle of the equipment need to have a. Uh, access to the uh, actual system or actual flow in the pipeline otherwise okay if we just put outside so the energy of the equipment okay, it cannot be transferred through and they cannot measure so in this second case so it does not impede the flow but uh, we made a hole, we, we create a hole inside okay, the, uh, to, so that the equipment can access the flow. Okay, so this is invasive, okay, but not intrusive. Okay, you have to consider this okay, uh, uh, meaning that if uh, you have to ask the structure engineer lah, whether it is possible to perform such or to is, in, in installing the equipment to, to do to do something like that. So is it possible? Uh, let's say the pressure, how what, what happened to the pressure and so on. Okay. So in this in in, in the second uh, top uh, right case, so this is. Uh, uh, kind of installation is uh, invasive but not intrusive it does not impede how about non evasive but intrusive so the third case is basically uh, somehow when we design the pipeline so we don't disturb the integrity we don't disturb the integrity uh, of the actual system. So somehow before we uh, operate the system or let the material to flow, uh, okay, we insert okay, the equipment or the transducer inside. So it is basically uh, staying inside somehow okay okay the device can operate or can be basically powered okay from outside or using the wireless energy transfer okay for example lah. okay but this uh, equipment is basically inside the pipe it does not you you do not does not compromise okay, uh, the structure of the pipe but you install the equipment inside so basically it will okay, somehow disturb okay the the flow uh, inside the uh, pipeline in this case okay so this is uh, done if Invasive but intrusive. Okay. How about in this case of non-invasive, non intrusive? Okay, non-invasive and non intrusive. Okay, probably what happened you okay uh Customize your pipeline 
you customize your pipeline somehow you customize the pipeline and it nice Let me try. Okay, more or less it look like this. You customize your pipeline to have a narrow, okay. Uh, you reduce the circumference at some point, okay. Uh, and then you install the instrument at that point. Okay, let's see the instrument at that point. So basically, this one is not intrusive and not invasive. Uh, so the flow, okay, you Okay, try to not to disturb uh, basically the uh, actual uh, condition of the flow okay uh, we're not compromising uh, the structure of the pipe and also does not uh, intrude okay, uh, the sensor into the pipeline Okay, but uh, this kind of non intrusive and non invasive require uh, high precision or, or customized engineering design. Okay, where the pipeline, okay, you have to, okay, at one point, okay, you have to design a special, okay, structure. Uh, uh, it all depends, okay, on men. Uh, it it really depends uh, into a lot of consideration like whether you want to uh, then use invasive uh, and intrus intrusive or invasive but not intrusive okay and so on so this is the uh, consideration uh, the uh, difference between uh, invasive and that intrusive Okay, so uh, other than that, okay, so uh, factors like electrical connection or signal conditioning, okay, electrical connection. Doctor, okay. yes. Sorry for this W. Okay. Uh, for, uh, for this non invasive, right, or intrusive, the distraction of the sound is, is there any uh -huh. hole on the pipeline? For the first one? No, so if you look at the non-intrusive, for invasive, oh yeah, so this one, and then a non in This one? Uh, yeah, so the non-invasive non and non-intrusive, is there the, any different? What uh, is the different? With, for the hole. There's yeah, a hole. The, this is a hole. So this one? Yeah, How, hole. how about this one? Is it any hole? Which one? The, what, okay, let's say one, two. Three, four. Okay. So you are talking which four. one? I'm talking about two and three. Two and three. So, three, there is no hole. So it means that you put the the instrument inside on the in the inner wall. Oh, inner wall. Okay. Uh, inner wall. You put the, the inner wall. 
Okay. But number two, you make a hole. Oh. So the thing, the thing number three, maybe when before the pipeline is fully assembled, you understand? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, before okay, the number... pipe is fully assembled, lah. Uh, yeah, but number two, let's say it's already there. Sorry, okay, okay, okay. Okay, how come you want to dismantle? Okay, so, so, so you have to lah. You have no choice lah. We okay. have to go for invasive but not intrusive. We have to make a hole. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, okay, nice hole, and then okay, but it's all have to consider lah. Uh, the pressure, uh, maximum pressure. Whether if you make a hole, you will, will it compromise uh, the whole structure? Uh, so there are many considerations. Uh, that's why, uh, that's why the I think the best way is before the uh, the whole system is uh, uh, designed, it must involve uh, all the engineers, including the instrument. Okay, so they have their say. Uh, Okay, okay. So, okay. which industry will use the number three application, uh, doctor? Number three. Yeah. Uh, basically, number three. Uh, I don't. Is is not directly putting the thing, but uh, uh, there is equipment uh, inside. Uh, the put the put the 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 crawl the material uh, the equipment inside lah. So okay. like like for example in uh, pipe 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 testing or something like that lah. Okay okay Rota. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay so uh we continue on the, on, on the electrical connection or signal conditioning we will into that uh, in more detail in the later chapter lah, where I prepare the content. Okay, electrical connection like uh, yesterday we talked about on or this morning early we talked about uh, analog signal. Okay, compatibility, installation, maintenance, technical support. They also important. Uh, like maintenance, you have to. I don't know, maybe it's out of our head, but at least uh, uh, when we choose a when we choose a transducer or, or a supplier, okay, we need to know whether they will exist, okay, for at least uh, two or two three years, okay. But normally, when my my experience when we do. <laughs> get something hard to find a, a, a supplier or vendor that can stay okay, supplying this the, the equipment so normally we will just find uh, same uh, mean similar equipment lah, with, with the similar uh, uh, similar specification uh, isolation uh, in terms of the fitting Retrofitting also uh, must be considered. Um, the the best thing is you have uh, like check or use the common lah standard of uh, in in industry. Okay, like the cabling. Okay, the plug. Okay, better if you use uh, British standard or Malaysian standard, we follow. Otherwise, the interchangeability will be a bit difficult. Uh. Okay, but normally, that problem we cannot avoid. Uh, what we we have to do, we have to find adapters. Okay, adapters. Or sometimes we have to make our own adapters. Okay, lifetime also important. Uh, uh, factor in choosing, in choosing your sensor and transducer. Lifetime, uh, may, uh, may depend on the uh, material or the structure of your equipment. Okay, uh, let's say your equipment 
uh, it has a stainless steel cover or stainless steel uh, casing. So of course it will be much uh, stronger. Okay, it can use uh, air in the very harsh condition. Okay, if the casing is just made of plastic, so it will not be suitable. You can if you want much better material, go for composite material. Okay, and. And actually, cost is one of uh, the last thing uh, you had to uh, in in designing my experience. Uh. But if your if your uh, company or if you have uh, unlimited cost, so that's great. Okay, but usually uh, when in production, cost. Uh, but uh, must must be within okay uh, the affordable budget lah okay but you have to if the cost is too low you have to compromise lah uh, with the other uh, parameters like the especially the accuracy okay and like for equipment invasive non invasive intrusive even the fitting type. Uh, will determine the cost, okay, and uh, and also in terms of the safety, it okay, must must be considered. Uh. I think uh, this is okay. Okay, so the measurable physical parameters. Uh, hang on. So we go, we, I think, uh, we stop here, okay, and we will continue back uh, at 2, 2 p.m. Is that okay? It's okay, doctor. Okay. Okay. So we will make it at 2, 2 p.m. Doctor, thank you. Okay, doctor, thank you. Bye.